Hit subscribe and follow ISCA on YouTube. Uh, as a, a collegiate athlete, distance runner, I was competing in a, uh, a steeplechase. It's a, it's a track event that involves going over barriers and through water. Uh, early on in the race, going through the water hazard, uh, another uh, runner's uh, foot came down on my ankle, created a gash and uh, a sprained ankle. I, I limped for about half a lap, uh, started feeling okay, and continued the race. I, f I finished the race didn't do well uh, because of that kind of break in performance and then the race was over feeling disappointed as I got over the disappointment and the feeling of effort that comes with aerobic push and aerobic exertion my foot started to hurt and then I remembered uh, about the incident on the track looked down saw that my uh, my shoe was filling up with blood uh, so I ended up making my way to the hospital. It turns out this was at the Quantico Marine Base. So I ended up at the Quantico Marine Hospital. It took me in pretty quickly. Uh, I was laying on a gurney and someone was working on uh, repairing the laceration in my ankle. And having had this type of procedure done before, uh, my strategy is typically to just try to put my mind somewhere else, try to ignore what's happening for the moment as best I could, just let it get done, and once it's over, uh, obviously move on. So, so I'm doing that, and uh, the process is going on and on and on, and, and I'm, I'm wondering what's, what, what the problem is. And uh, so I, I asked the, uh, it was a corpsman uh, working on me, you know, how many, how many stitches do you have in it? And he goes, uh, well, sorry, but none yet. I'm, uh, I'm having a hard time here. So. A little frustrated at that point, still sticking with that same pain management technique until an officer, I believe a physician, walks by and says, uh, watch what you're doing there if you uh, dig too deep and catch that tendon, that could be a real problem. Uh, now all of a sudden everything just hurt so much more. Uh, uh, I was really tuned into the wound, uh, concerned that uh, an injury or mistake might happen. Fortunately, shortly afterwards, another one came by. Uh, another uh, more experienced uh, medical provider came by, mo moved the uh, guy that was trying to do the work aside, dug in. Seemed like he knew what he was doing. Gave him a little bit of time. I asked, "How many stitches do you have in?" He said, "Got a couple in. Need to do a couple more." And so I was able to uh, shift my attention back again, uh, just to, to to try to put my mind somewhere else, just to kind of ignore the pain and just wait for it to pass. Procedure done. Now I'm sitting out in the waiting room, and uh, it, it's really starting to hurt a lot now. Uh, so over this period of stops and starts and treatment, each time there was a need to work on the, the suturing again, I had to rub, scrape the wound, and get it to bleed again and, and break up the scabbing so that they could close the wound. And I think that was finally catching up with me afterwards. And um, so I'd get up, walk on it. It seemed to get a little bit better. Um, wait a while, get up, walk on it again. And, until I finally got to the point where I, I really couldn't stand on my foot. I was about to ask for medicine. And then a uh, young child comes in with his mother, has his hand covered with a, with a dish towel. Mother pulls the dish towel off. The kid's hands just shredded like he fell on a cheese grater. And I looked and thought, the kid's just sitting there very stoically. I'm like, yeah, maybe... <laughs> you know, maybe I don't really need uh, pain medicines after all. So I just sat there and waited and um, finally I decided I did need the pain medicines and asked for them. Pain medicines came. At this point I couldn't walk on my foot at all. So I hopped up to the table on one leg. They gave me the medicine. And it's now a couple hours later. I'd run a race, hadn't had anything to drink. I was really quite sure I was, was not going to be able to swallow those medicines. So I, I asked, is there any water? And the person looked at me and said, yeah, the water's like down the hall, turn left, cafeteria's down that way. I just looked at the person like, you know, I'm on one leg. And at any rate, so I started heading down the hallway, hopping from doorway to fire extinguisher, holding on, resting, trying to get to the, uh, to the cafeteria. In the meantime, I'm really angry, and now the pain's falling away. I just have all this energy from being frustrated and annoyed. So I finally make it to the cafeteria. I go hopping in on one leg into the cafeteria. 
Uh, obviously got some jokes about a guy in a track uniform hopping on one leg, uh, going in there like got lost, made a wrong turn in the race. At uh, any rate, got the water, took the medicine a couple hours later, I felt fine. Uh, the point of the story is that my experience of pain changed dramatically based on what was happening at the time. Uh, initially during the race, I, uh, pain went away and I, I actually completely forgot about it uh, without any particular effort on my part. In fact, this is a very common experience in por sport, police, and military environments. People sometimes have uh, wounds or injuries, often far more serious than uh, mine, and have no pain uh, for the moment. Um, pain experience changed based on whether I felt comfortable or afraid. What I would do about pain, ask for help, was based on what else was happening around me. Seeing a young kid tolerating pain may be better than me, made me not want to ask for it. And then finally, uh, frustration level being so high anger and in the particular environment that that kind of helped supersede the pain and gave me the energy to keep going.